So in this class we worked on uh, Koshinage hip throws and some throwing principles. So uh, check it out. Tonight, you're gonna flip midair and land. But this is a basic training way to do it. So basically I go like I'm gonna do a forward roll. And then land like so. Right? So I'm still getting as much surface area with the muscle of the leg and arm. Because this arm may still be held by the by the opponent. We're gonna look at Koshi Nage, which is hip throw, hip throws. A big factor is being able to squat. Because a lot of people they get in the position to do the throw and they're too wide, which means they won't get enough lift on the opponent, so their feet don't clear the ground. And the other thing is even if they do get them up, that if they slip, they might fall on the leg and fly on the knee. So we don't want that. So you stand where feet kind of like shoulder width apart and you know you can it, you can have your toes open a little bit it doesn't have to be perfectly straight but it don't want like duck footed duck footed like if you walk like this like if you walk with your feet pointed your toes pointed out start training yourself to walk with your toes straight because it's healthier for your knees like uh, a coworker of mine He's got really bad back problems because he walks like this. Messed his back up. He's got slip discs because his feet are positioned wrong when he's walked for 60 years. If you think about it mechanically, it makes sense because let's say if I'm walking in this direction on the scene, my knee naturally bends in that line. It does not, if I do this, my knee should bend this way, but I'm trying to make it go this way. And now I've got cross force in my knee joint. Now, you're like, oh, I don't have any problems because I'm 25. Yeah, give it about 40 more years, and your body's gonna be all fucked up. So it's better to start practicing. Like I used to walk like this, and it's taken about a year. And I still have to do it sometimes. Just consciously remind myself to walk my toes straight to fix that motor issue, right? Um, so like, if you're training the dojo, like you should occasionally like glance and make sure you're doing it like your toes are straight. And not doing this. Right? So it's also a good way to practice squatting, which every human being in the world should be able to squat to full capacity. If you can't, well, then you got work to do. I've got work to do. But the idea is you, so here we'll just practice basic squatting. So stand up straight, you know, uh, feet short width apart, squeeze your butt together. Yes. Squeeze your glutes, tighten your belly. So the belly tightness is such that I could kind of like whack you in the gut and it not be a problem. Right? Yeah. A little tighter. There you go. What this does is it, it stabilizes your spine. You're engaging your core muscles so you stabilize your spine. So when you want to do a squat, the idea is to is to uh, send your like how do I explain this? You don't do it from the knees necessarily. You're, you think your hips going slightly back and down, right? And your hands can come up for a counterbalance. That's fine. But I don't want to like break this spinal organization. Like I definitely don't want to do stuff like this. That's not a squat, that's just bad form. So your knees start to push out, your hips go down and back. Try to keep yourself as vertical as much as you can with your hands for counter as you can. And you should be able to get past like your hip joint below your knee joint. Right? And that's a basic squat. With the knees, think of pushing your knees out. Don't want this. This is going to be really bad. Especially when you start putting weight on it, like a person, you might collapse. Here you'll be strong. So knees go out, like track, basically knees track over toes. Right? And you should have at least this. Uh, Ethan Hammond, who's a mobility coach and he's also trains in vision time. He can sit at the bottom position for 10 minutes, no problem. And that's like a baseline of what humans 
from birth to death should be able to do. If you think about it, that's how we're built to poop. Before we created death machines and chairs. As much as you can, like at home, like if you're studying or if you're like watching TV or whatever, sit on the floor. So that you have full range of motion your whole life. Because if you like, how many of us like do this? Especially if you've got a chair with arms. You know, we sit down and kind of like <sighs> with our hands or <clears throat> with our arm, right? Probably should do it. So if you have an office job like me, don't use the armrest. Sit down and sit up with your own power. And if you have a rolling chair, if you're holding the things just so it doesn't roll on you, then make sure that that's only what you're doing your arms for, so it doesn't roll out from under you. Don't use it as a state, like a stabilizer to push yourself up. You, you'll live longer, right? You'll live longer and you'll live freely longer. Meaning you won't need a walker or a cane or a wheelchair or somebody to wipe your butt for you as you get older. At least not physically. Your mind, I, I can't help with that. <laughs> but physically, you'll still be able to do stuff. So it's very important. Um, and Ethan has a video on, a, ton, a bunch of videos on YouTube for doing that mobilization exercise. Like I, I spent one day, like you can find yourself like a small stool, like maybe something like that. You just something low to the ground that will get your hips below that level. Hopefully this is strong enough. That, yeah, that's pretty good. And I'll get myself in the proper position and I'll like sit there and stretch in this position. Like maybe I do this and I press, like I squeeze my thighs in for a count of five. One, two, three, four, five. And then I relax and I try to mobilize in that position and just move around a little bit. And what that does is a lot of flexibility and mobility issues. Sometimes it'll be trauma, like you've got an injury that you've got to get over. Sometimes it's the tissues themselves are actually too tight. And so maybe you need to like get some uh, like yoga tune-up balls or something and start massaging those areas to get, more, to get hydration back in the muscles. But a lot of times it's just your nervous system fights you because it thinks this is dangerous. Right? It doesn't know that you can go past that point. And so you hack your nervous system. Three, three ways to make a person go from standing to the ground. Um, one is you pick them up off the ground and put them back onto the ground. So that means basically lifting their center of gravity until their feet get off the ground and then steering them back to the ground, hopefully in the bad position. Uh, the second way is yeah, and that's, that works whether their base is wide or their base is narrow, meaning the distance between their feet. Generally speaking, when the base is wide, it's easier to remove one of the pillars, one of the base points, in this case, the leg. So you, their base is wide, you remove their leg, there's nothing supporting their center of gravity, and they fall. And then the third one is, you, and this works generally better when the base is a bit narrow, um, you pin the base in place and you move the center of gravity outside of that and they fall. And that's it. That's the fundamental concept. There's only three ways to throw a person. Pick them up, take out a base point, or pin the base and move the center of gravity out, out of that box. There's nothing else to it. Yeah. Now the physical form that you take to get there, there's a lot of variation on that, but just bear those in mind that if you're trying to think of where you are and what kind of throw you should do, assess, okay, is the base wide, is the base narrow, you know, or should I just pick them up? Right, can I pick them up? You know, like, you're not gonna hit throw Claude. Right, you know, you know Claude, right? Big bald guy? Oh yeah, I'll say right You know, 300 pound bald guy? Yeah, you'll, he'll just, you'll collapse under it, probably. So some other method would probably be best for that. Um, <clears throat> So, I guess the way you could think about that is picking them up off the ground as a true throw, taking out a base point as like a sweep, and then pinning the base and moving the hips, generally speaking, the hips outside that, you know, the base uh, would be like a takedown. 
if you only get 10 bullet terms. <clears throat> There's three phases to a throw. There's what's called Kazushi, which will just stand natural. Kazushi and this, Kazushi is like breaking the structure or breaking the balance, which means I'm starting to break it. So you just have to take his feet and move him to keep his balance. So I've got backwards in a straight line, you got forward in a straight line, you've got to the side, and to the other side, and you've got diagonals. There, there, uh, this way, and this way, and that's basically it. In a very, in the most fundamental way you can think. So maybe try a couple of these, like just community, and you move to a certain place. You go ahead. letting him move me. I'm not taking a step until I have to. Is think about your pinkies. If I want to pull him back, think you also have like wrist motion. So if I'm pulling, I'll actually do something like, like when you cast a fish line, you think you got a nibble and you kind of jerk on it to hook the fish. You've got that here, so it's basically when I move, like if I'm moving back, I'm going to throw back. I lift and I pull that hand back that way because I want to like get some momentum in there. Same thing if I'm going out here, the pinky, right? Pinky. Think of your arm steering with your body helping, right? That will help add a little bit of extra into it. Uh, Zushi is the breaking of the balance. Uh, then there's Uchikomi, which is fitting in. Uh, basically fitting into the shape that you created of, out of his body, right? So, like, I'll go with this side since I got bad shoulders. You can hold So, let's say I want to throw him, and I've created Kazushi, right? So, I've got to fit in, and often Uchikomi happens at the same time. So, I don't want to go boom, and then try to fit in, go reset, right? So, I need to make this pretty seamless. So like if I'm, a, <clears throat> if I'm doing like a seonage type throw, and let's say I get him up, then I've got to enter in pretty quickly. Right? So the kazushi happens at the same time. And that's easy to lift it. So you need to have those, ha have those happen very quickly with each other. So like if, I want to take out that leg like a, like a soto gake. As I do this, I'll take my step to get his body positioned. And then I can take the leg. Okay. And then once you fit in, so you get Kazushi Uchikomi, and then I think Kake is like the last bit. That's the actual execution of the throw, where you actually drop it. Okay. So, uh, this is more for information right now, because we're going to look at Koshinage tonight. Uh, so, basic mechanics for Koshinage is one hand either, either overhooking and cupping his elbow, or you can grab the material if you're you know, in that situation. I personally like to get the body, because it doesn't matter if he has a t-shirt on, or like, he could be naked and I can still throw him. Right, you, you hook on the natural hooks of the body. It's like the bones and the elbow joint are a natural hook point, right? So I have that. Come in and hug around his waist. Right? And you know, you can grab on the belt for today. Like take this leg across in front of his leg. So you're basically going to match him and create like a box between like the lines of your feet. So, so one, two, and 
you know, this is where the Kazish had them. A little artificial because we're going slow. You, have, you get your hips lower than his. And I like to stick this hip out just a little bit further. So I'm not exactly in front of him, I'm just a little bit past his center line. So I'm lower. This is where the squat becomes important. Is I lift him with my legs. Okay. So it's easy. The hands are very gentle. You just got them on your hips. Okay. <clears throat> so grab, grab, form a box, stick your hip through a little bit further, and you want to have a lot of surface connection between your bodies. Then just lift, like you're lifting a heavy backpack. Okay. Hip width apart. That means I have maximum lift. If I'm like here, I don't have nearly as much lift. I get further out, I can't get him off the ground. That's why the squat is so important, right? You have to get very low to get your hips low enough, especially if the person is shorter than you, right? So Madison's, you know, probably, what, four inches shorter than me? So I have to be even lower, like, cause especially if we're fighting, He's going to be, have, his knees will probably be bent a little bit too, right? So I've got to have enough to hold it, right? But, you know, we can have a conversation here. My knees are still bent, right? That means I can still lift. So you have this to lift him, but you're not just lifting him. You're also tossing him. You're catapulting him. Counter. I drop my hips and I lift my spine back. Right? See so all the space? That's what we're trying to keep him from doing, right? If he takes out that space, and I'm bent, I can try as best I can go ahead and lift. I can find a little bit, but not much. I'm also like a lot heavier. But, and especially if he had momentum with it, like this, this method of learning how to hold the person up on your hips isn't the throw. Because there's no position or no momentum. He isn't like breaking me and making me already fall and then putting himself in a position to help me fall. Make sense? That's why you have a break or you have position. We'll look at setups later. But you set them up so that they're already in the state of falling and you just fit in to make it worse. So, uh, so if, the, if the counter is to drop the hips and arc the spine a little bit back to counteract this pull, then you know if you're doing the throw, you want that pull. And the more of it, the better, generally speaking. Also, think, the more I lean over, the harder it is to control my balance. Unless I'm counterbalancing by moving my center of gravity and my hips out. So your center of gravity is like here, and your hips, and you start to do this, your center of gravity now floats outside of your body. Because you gotta think, where is my base to go vertical to that? Because my hips are back here and that's weight, but my upper body's out here ahead of my feet and that's weight. So I'm balanced in the center. So my, fit, my center of gravity is probably closer to here where my fist is. Which means now you have to move that further to throw them. How does everybody feel about holding the person up? Okay with it? Okay. So, um, setting it up. A couple ways to set it up. So let's say we collided somehow and I found myself here. Right? Got to this clinch. You know, we've done all the like underhooks and overhooks and ties and stuff. And one of them was this. Right? I'm set up for this now. Maybe I go here, whatever, but I've got my hook here. So a couple ways to set this up. If I'm uh, perpendicular to him, I'll take a step out to the side and I'll pull him. Okay. So I'll go. So step out to the side with a pull of the arm or the really this whole hip. So maybe I'm here. I'm like okay, and I move him. And it basically gets him halfway to my back. So this one's, instead of pulling him, like pulling him with momentum, and that's one, one method is like using momentum. 
is I keep him in place and I move around him. Okay. So I'm trying to hold him in place via my grips because I don't want him like to move from this position. So I kind of walk around him and I'm holding him in place with my grips until I find myself in position and then I can lift and throw. It's a little weird at first. I'm kind of circling around him, but not tremendous amount. Not like going, you know, 180 degrees behind him. I'm going like a little past 90, maybe. All right, if I'm here, might be that I'm holding him in place here as I move myself around and try to throw. This doesn't work on this one. Yes, because I'm connected with him, he moves with me. Okay, let's try that a little bit. So the next class, we'll be looking at uh, Raigo Shinage, which is another type of hip throw. So stay tuned for that.